This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and today I have on a musician, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name correctly, Genghis Don. Yes, I said it right. I'm, I'm, I'm always bad with names, <laughs> and I was more afraid I was going to pronounce Don wrong more than Genghis. <laughs> um, and uh, Genghis has been referred to us and. Um, I was told, please listen to his music before you even start any kind of discussion. And so I did this afternoon and um, I, I felt sad listening to the music. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I love the music, but it made me feel sad because um, I knew there was something deeper in the music. And then I started reading some information and understanding where this music is coming from and how supportive it is. So tell our listeners a little bit about, number one, how you got into music and how this all came together. Well, I, I was always around music growing up. You know, I was um, raised in uh, the church, you know, and my family's from the Caribbean as well. So we, um, my a lot of my family members who are in the Caribbean play steel pan, which is like the native instrument for Trinidad. And um, I grew up playing steel pan, so that was my first instrument. And then eventually I moved over to, to uh, drums because it's like in the percussive family. And um, yeah, so from there, like uh, I, I started playing drums in the church and then I moved on to uh, playing drums, playing like jazz. Cause I, I used to listen to a lot of jazz. My parents like would, play a lot of records like not just jazz but like reggae a lot of soul a lot of um r&b so like i had a i had a wide uh intro i had a good introduction to music sure up. and so that led me to uh college and where i i stopped playing for a little bit because i was focusing on on academics and also i was i was playing sports so um then i just took up i i found my passion again for music and like my junior year. And since then it's been uh, on a roller coaster. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the fact that um, in high school, you were, you loved music, you were playing sports. How does music influence you at all when you're playing sports? And the reason I'm asking um, is my son loves baseball. And he hears a beat in his head when he's um, out there doing batting practice. So did music help you in any way? Uh, yeah, a lot of the times, cause I played basketball in, in high school and college and I'd have like my specific playlist that I would play just for like, just to get me amped and get me into the game. So in that, in that way, music definitely does affect like how you how you perform but um i think music is a is one of those universal languages that you're able to communicate like whatever emotion and it, it can be it can be translated in everything that you do you know and i think that that uh it's special like music is so special in that way because there's not many other things that are that you can translate in that way and it's interesting that we can all listen to the same um, music selection and hear something totally different. Yeah. Um, and um, walk away either saying, you know, it really hit my gut or, oh, that was, that was pleasant. Yeah. And sometimes I find it very confusing when, um, you know, I share a piece of music with somebody and I don't tell them what I was thinking. And then, I can see they have a totally opposite reaction for me. And it's like, how did that happen? So yeah. do you find the same thing when maybe you're writing your music or putting things together like that? Yeah, for sure. Like it's, it's subjective, you know, music is uh, art is subjective and I can, I can go into writing like my process for writing a song. I can have this particular mindset and then when the audience receives it, they're like, I can get feedback from it and it'll be like completely different than what I was trying to, what I was trying to uh, 
get across in the music, you know? So in college, you said you played basketball. Yeah. Um, was that something you wanted to pursue um, as a career or was that just uh, get you through college and have a little bit of fun and keep yourself in shape? Yeah, it was, it's funny because music and sports has always been like, uh, they've always been dueling in my life, you know? So in high school, I, I stopped really playing music to focus on basketball because I wanted to pursue it in college. And when I got to college, I was playing, I was playing basketball. And then I was also studying accounting, which I got my, my degree in, but, um, music just kind of like found its way back into my life. You know, it wasn't really like I, I, I went out and was like, I'm, I'm going to focus on music. It, it just happened that way. Well, and I hope as people are listening to this or watching it on YouTube. So if you're, if you're listening to it on um, just an audio, uh, I want you to understand as Genghis basically told you, he's from the Caribbean. Um, he is a black man. And yet everything you're talking about and what you went through is almost identical to my son who is a white man. Mm -hmm. And if I can make people understand that we all have so much in common, it's time to stop determining who's better, who's best, who's worse. We are all in this together. And when we listen to the music and we watch you play the sport and see that you've gone through college and you've done all the things that are important to you, how different are you? You're not. And so to those of you who are just listening to the dialogue, uh, please go look at the YouTube as well, because I want you to, you know, take it all in. And that's something that we tried to do here at New Cleveland Radio is, you know, learn and understand from each other. Yeah, for sure. So when I was listening to your music earlier today, um, I said, it, it made me sad. Um, and when I didn't understand why, and I started reading about your mission behind it, I thought to myself, maybe that's what I was feeling. I was feeling the mental anguish that many of us go through. So, Tell me what got you to write this music this way and, and want to support uh, mental health in the black communities. Yeah, so this specific, this new album that I'm, that I'm uh, currently getting ready to release is, it's focus is on mental health issues in the black community because, uh, you know, growing up in the black community, mental health is considered like a taboo topic and it's not really something that's spoken about in households. And it's, you just kind of just brush it off. And it's, a, it's affecting a lot of people and a lot of people go undiagnosed throughout their lives because they refuse to really get the help that they, they need, you know? Sure. And so I just wanted my music to kind of like, ha I, whenever I make music, I always wanted to have a purpose. And this one, the, for this album specifically, it was dedicated to my grandmother because she uh, passed away from complications of dementia, and dementia is a mental, a form of mental health illness sure. that like doesn't have a doesn't have a cure, you know. And um, so I decided like to not only focus on dementia, but like other forms of mental health illnesses like um, depression, anxiety, uh, um, bipolar disorder, also like um, codependency, and and. And, but not only that, but I wanted to also focus on, I didn't want it to be like a, whenever i whenever I bring up, I'm the type of person that whenever I bring up an issue, I always like to bring up a solution. So I wanted to focus, I wanted to bring up these issues, but also bring up like how people deal with them, how people cope with them. So some of the songs are also ways in which people uh, cope with these issues. So, so such as um, therapy, you know, it can be even talking to talking to people, talking to a friend, self-medicating, um, working out. And so I just thought that this album was was it just needed to shed a light on that. 
Well, and it was for me. Um, so here I am, a white woman. I'm probably older than your parents. Um, and my family also, mental health was taboo, okay? Yeah. Um, if I said I was sad, uh, my mother would just tell me to smile. Hmm. My sadness when I was growing up, I didn't realize was depression, but it was. Yeah. Um, but to please my mother, I would walk around, you know, just smiling and mama, what can I do to make you happy? When inside, I was torn apart. Yeah. Um, and sadly, we don't understand mental health well enough for us to look at each other and say, it's okay. It's okay to have the feelings you have. Yeah. And there is a way, like you said, of working through them, but you have to be taught that. It has to be in your community so that you can understand how you can get through it. And truthfully, I was um, a middle-aged adult when I finally sought the help. And I was so grateful because it has turned my whole world around. It's mm -hmm. not that I don't have depression times because I still do, but I know how to work through them and I yeah. can understand them and others. So maybe that's what I was hearing in the music, uh, yeah. which I thought was excellent. So how long have you been recording? Well, I started producing and, and I started producing like doing electro digital electronic music in college. Okay. Um, my junior year actually, but I started like recording as a, as an artist, maybe like almost less than a year actually, because it started during quarantine. I, I was just tired of like sending my music out to artists as a producer and never like hearing back from people. So I decided like, why not, um, you know, write to my own music and be a songwriter as well. Absolutely. So do you own all the rights to your music because you're producing and engineering them? Yes. Uh, it's, it's an independent project. So I'm, I'm putting it out independently. I own everything. And, that, and that's a difference from the music industry of the past. In the past, um, musicians like yourself, uh, you were waiting for somebody, hopefully, to come knocking on your door uh, yeah. and say, hey, let me help you with your career. Um, and some people made decent money at that. Others um, lost a lot of money at that because those same people um, were charging them sometimes even more than what they're making on their music. Yeah, I was um, actually signed to a label. So I, I understand how it, the, the business of it, yeah. And, you know, many of us really didn't understand that back in the day. And we're starting to understand it more and more today, uh, especially of us, those of us who are doing podcasting. And um, our first year in the business, we went out and we got all the licenses so that we could play music. Mm. And then we realized that, those licenses didn't cover all the music we were playing yeah. um, and we were getting fined and it was like, whoa, you know, I've spent thousands of dollars on licensing, um, but didn't realize that some of the music that we were playing didn't fall under the license we had. Um, so I want to encourage people, you know, when you go out and you listen to Genghis Don's music, Remember all the work he's put into it. We want you to listen to it, but we also want you to buy it. Yeah. We also want you to go see any performances that he's in because that is his living and that is important. Well, now that you mentioned it, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's how, no, you're not. Go ahead. I was, uh, well, that this specific project is, um, I'm not seeing any of the proceeds. Like I'm not seeing anything of, of the project all of it's going to um, uh, the Boris L. Henson Foundation, which is uh, specifically a foundation dedicated to um, bringing multi of resources to the black community for mental health. And so like all, all of the uh, proceeds, all the revenue that I make from this album is I don't see it. It, it just goes straight to that. But that's, that's just as important, you know, yeah. for us to understand, um, you know, I sometimes see this, well, I see it a lot where people say, oh, I saw that on your site and I just stripped it down. And it's like, um, 
no, that artist deserves to be, uh, yeah. you know, paid for his services, whether he's using it for his own living or he's donating it like you are. So I just think that's really, really important. So who else was involved in this project with you? Is it just you? Because I remember seeing some other names. Yeah, no, there's um, a lot. I have a lot of artists that I consider like my friends on this project. Um, I have, well, the upcoming single that I have coming out is featuring Kumbaya, who's like an amazing MC and producer from Brooklyn. Um, I also have Don Smith, who's another MC uh, from, uh, I believe, the Bronx. Uh, don't quote me on that one. It's okay. <laughs> um, and I have, I also have uh, Yako and Eris, who I met while I was in school in Boston. And uh, there's also like um, Kia, who's a really, a, a budding R&B singer in her own right. She's like blowing up kind of right now. And um, there's Masai, who's also a, a, female, a dope MC that you should check out from Brooklyn, New York as well. And um, I also have a feature from my favorite artist of all time. And I was so happy to get it, uh, Georgia Ann Muldrow. I don't know if you guys know who she is, but she's worked on countless art, like countless hip hop and R&B songs. Like uh, she produced some songs for Erica Badu. She's produced songs for uh, like D'Angelo and, and wow. et cetera. Yeah, she's, she's one of the most important uh, artists of our time, I think. Well, one of the interesting things that I have realized since I've been doing these podcasts with the entertainers for the last almost five years is how you all work together. You look out for each other. Um, and it's a rare community because I know you said you went to school for accounting. So if you were working in an accounting firm, um, typically the other accountants, they don't look out for each other. They all go and they do their job and yeah. they need to be the best at what they're doing so that they can get promoted or whatever. And nothing wrong with that, but yet in the music industry, um, I find that everybody seems to want to help the next guy be as good, if not better. And that just means so much to me because I keep hoping that more of us will get that message and we'll say, hey, I can do that too. Mm. Yeah, especially, especially during the, pan, like the pandemic because a lot of us, uh, our means of living was taken from us you know, through touring and, and shows. And so the only thing we could do was like, you know, create music together for, for the the general public and, you know, make money that way. Right. And, and um, I think that you see it, the, the higher you get, like the more experience you get in the music industry, the less you see it, but like the, on the level of like you're starting off and like you're trying to make a name for yourself. There's a lot of, there's a lot of camaraderie there and with, cause a lot of artists uh, are just trying to work with whoever they can, you know, at the time. Absolutely. So I take it you are in New York City, correct? I'm currently in Jersey City, but it's okay. right, ne right, yeah. next, right next door. Okay. Um, so I know things are slowly opening up again. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, one of my dear friends who is uh, another podcaster with us, um, he's been uh, going out during the day and going into the city and taking pictures and showing us that life is coming back yeah. so what does that mean for the entertainment industry right now then well hopefully uh it means gigs means shows you know um i've actually gotten booked for some shows coming up that i'm looking forward to um and i think shows means income which means you know less stress on musicians to to be able to find Absolutely. means of living so tell us the name of uh, your new release that's coming out and how people can, will be able to find it. Yeah, it's called Power. It um, it features Kumbaya, like I was saying earlier, and it, it touches on the power of the tongue. So you know how I was saying, I was 
uh, saying about how people cope with these these issues. One of them is just speaking, speaking to a professional or a friend, whoever it may be. So this song touches upon that subject and it's coming out uh, next Friday. So not the 13th, sorry, the, uh, the 16th, but the 23rd of April. And you can find it on all streaming platforms. How wonderful. So it looks like 2021 is going to slowly get you back out there. Um, it's going to make a name. Um, as I mentioned to Genghis when we first started, before we actually went on air, I have a number of other podcasters who would be so interested in the message that you have and that you're, you know, donating to. And I'm going to put you in touch with them um, because we all have to help each other now. It's there's, there's no question in my mind that um, we all need to put our hand out and not a hand out asking for something, okay? But putting our hand out to help the next person. Yeah. And um, I think if we can start doing that and doing more of it, um, we can, you know, maybe avoid pandemics and avoid um, some of the mystery that... Um, we're hiding from people. Um, it, it shouldn't be that we don't understand mental illness because I think we all have a little bit of it to be really yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, and I think possibly my parents suffered from it too. And maybe that's why, um, you know, they, they didn't recognize it. You know, it was like, well, when you're sad, you're supposed to smile. And when you're smiling, you're supposed to laugh. Mm. But sometimes when it's hitting deep down inside, it's, it's very hard to do any of those things. Yeah. Well, I want to wish you the best. And again, your project comes out next Friday, the 23rd. Yep. And it will be on all streaming platforms. And the name of it, one more time. Power. Power. Can't forget that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I want to wish you the best. And again, I will get those contacts out to you later today. And, uh, you know, let's all fight the good fight. Okay. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.